What is going on everybody? Welcome, welcome back to the channel. Today marks about five months since I started delivering with Amazon Flex. And looking back over this time, I've learned a lot that I kind of wish I had known before I started delivering. Now the delivery process did take a while to get signed up for. It took about a month or so, which is longer than a lot of rideshare options, but it was definitely worth the wait. And for me, I started delivering with Amazon Flex after I quit my job, and I've been looking to launch some private label products in the future, but these take quite a few months to kind of get shipped out and for that whole process to get rolling. So Amazon Flex has definitely floated me during that time period and helped me continue to pay the bills. Now, I'm a very financially savvy person, at least most people would say. So when it comes to ride sharing, I'm always weighing the opportunities and trying to find the services that make me the most money for my time. And for me, that's been Amazon Flex. So I'm gonna go into some things that I've learned throughout that process that have really helped me become more efficient as an Amazon Flex driver. The very first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do when you start delivering with Amazon Flex is to download a mileage tracking app. Now Stride has a free option that works really well, but you can also use Everlance or QuickBooks Self-Employed to track your mileage. When you start tracking your mileage, all you wanna do is take that number of miles that are driven throughout the year and then multiply that by the standard deduction rate, which for 2018, I believe was 55 cents per mile. And that rate is gonna cover all of your vehicle related expenses from gas to maintenance and wear and tear. During your first year as a delivery driver with Amazon Flex, you're not expected to pay quarterly estimated taxes. You can if you want to, but you can also just wait to the end of the year to file all of your taxes. In year number two, that's when you have to start paying quarterly estimated taxes so it makes sense to kind of start thinking about that early and know what times of the year you're gonna to have to file these. When you pick up a block of packages at a distribution center, they'll come with a slip of paper that looks like this. Now on that slip of paper are the different zones that you're gonna be delivering to. Starting from the top with the closest zone and at the bottom, the last zone for your final deliveries. Now each package that you pick up is going to have a corresponding sticker that matches up with one of these zones. So it makes sense to put the zones at the beginning of your shift at the front of your car. That way it makes it easier to find those packages and you spend less time looking around. Now occasionally you'll luck out and the packages will actually be numbered. That makes it really easy to organize your packages. Some drivers don't have a distribution center that's close to their house, but still wanna pick up these warehouse blocks. If you happen to be a Lyft or an Uber driver alongside of Amazon Flex, then pick up a Lyft or Uber destination filter ride, and that way you're earning some money while you're riding over to the distribution center to start your block. Instant offers pay out really well for drivers, and you don't have to do any swiping to get them. They just pop up in your app, and then you have 30 seconds to decide if you wanna take the delivery. In my experience, they pay out significantly higher than DoorDash, Grubhub, Postmates, basically any other option in Seattle. Honestly, I've seen payouts starting at $21 before a tip is factored in, and that's for a single restaurant pickup and delivery to a house. The very minimum that you're ever gonna see on Amazon Flex instant offers, here in Seattle at least, is $7. And once again, that's before the tip is factored in. This compares to a $6.50 minimum with DoorDash, which is basically the highest alternative that you have to Amazon Flex in the Seattle area. Let's talk about cancellations. When you pick up a block from a distribution center and you wanna cancel that block, make sure you do it at least 45 minutes before that block begins. Otherwise, your reliability rating is gonna take a hit. Now, if you pick up a restaurant block on the other hand, currently you can cancel that block all the way up until the time that that restaurant block is scheduled to begin. Instant offers work a little bit differently. Once you've picked up an instant offer, you actually have five minutes that you can cancel that offer, but you can't do the cancellation within the app. So you have to call in and speak to customer service to get that canceled. It's a little bit more difficult to do, but sometimes you're gonna wanna do it. And if you feel like you wanna cancel that instant offer later on, there's really no option to do so. So make sure that you're committed and ready to pick up that order if you've waited more than five minutes after choosing to do so. All Amazon Flex drivers have what's called a reliability rating. And there are quite a few factors that come into play here. A couple of those are how many deliveries you complete each week and how many cancellations you've made. Now you're graded given a certain percentage. 
and you want to make sure that percentage remains high. So there's no given uh, percentage threshold that you have to maintain in order to stay active, but I always try and keep mine above 90 to 95%. Customer support for Amazon Flex is some of the best in the business. They can help you out with just about anything. And one of those things is your reliability rating. So you get an email every week letting you know what your rating was for the previous week. And let's say you didn't cancel a block on time. Usually you'll get sent an email by Amazon Flex asking if there was a reason why you missed that block. Always respond to this email and contest that missed block. That way it doesn't affect your reliability rating. Missed restaurant orders can also impact your reliability rating. A lot of times customer support will call in and ask why an order was missed. This is your opportunity to kind of save yourself and save your reliability rating. And a lot of times I actually call in to support myself and ask if they'll make a note explaining my case why an order was missed. This has helped me out a ton with my reliability rating in the long run. Don't waste a lot of time swiping for blocks in the app. A lot of flex drivers know that the prime now blocks are some of the highest paying blocks, but they're also the hardest to get. So don't waste a lot of time swiping around trying to get these because even though they pay higher, if you're spending a lot of time trying to get these blocks, then all of a sudden your hourly wages aren't what you expect. I recommend taking a lot of the distribution center blocks and then supplementing with instant offers. You can still make really good money, uh, upwards of $150 to $200 a day using this technique. One of the worst things that can happen to you as an Amazon Flex driver is picking up a block at a distribution center and then finding out that you have to drive another 40, 50, maybe even 60 miles away just to get started delivering those packages. And this might be after you drove a long ways just to get to the distribution center. In order to avoid this, make a couple friends at your local distribution center. If you get stuck with a bad block, you can usually plea and negotiate to get a block that's a little bit closer by. Also, you have a much higher chance of delivering far away if you're picking up the four or five hour blocks because a lot of the blocks that people don't want get pushed back to these higher hour blocks. So sticking to the three to three and a half hour blocks can keep you closer by. If a lot of blocks are popping up in your app, that means that you can usually wait a while and watch the prices increase on these blocks before accepting. I usually like to wait 30, maybe 40 minutes before I end up swiping on a block, assuming it hasn't gotten too close to the start time. When you're scanning in packages at a distribution center, make sure that the total number of packages listed in your app when you're done scanning matches up with the total number of packages down here at the bottom of your slip. This is really important because if you get a different number, you might end up with extra packages that you have to return to the warehouse at the end of the shift. The leftover packages problem comes up quite a bit more often when you scan in the bags that hold packages instead of individual packages themselves. Now this can definitely save you a lot of time, but make extra sure that your total packages number matches up with the packages on the sheet when you do this because oftentimes I get extra packages left over that I have to return to the warehouse when I use this method. If you have any additional tips for flex drivers, make sure to leave them down below and go ahead and hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. Also, make sure you stick around because I'm gonna be having a ton of other side hustle, Amazon Flex rideshare videos and some cool e-commerce videos coming up.